Hello everyone. This is take whatever the intro. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Plays here on YouTube and Twitch. Today I've already playing some Rocket League by myself, but I'm with a special guest who's gonna be talking with me, um special friend named Rushstone. He has a YouTube channel that I'll let him plug in a second, but he is not family friendly like me, just thought I'd say. So he's going to do his best to keep his mouth um pretty clean. So if Yep, I'll a, do my best. So if you are a kid and a parent, just know this is the um, specialty stream with him, he'll do his best, but he may let one or two slip there. Yeah, we had to restart already because <laughs> of that. Um, so, but yeah, you can so follow my stop. channel if you're... I'd say it's like PG-16. Okay, okay go ahead. So if you're 16 or above. Uh, yeah, you can link it. I'll send you the link. No, uh, I'd I'll say link. like 16 or I'll older. Your channel is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I said it's Rush Zone on YouTube, and you can put a link, um... I'll put a link in my video. Yeah. So... There'll be a link to Rush Zone on YouTube in my video, starting that now. Let's get going. I'm pretty sure it's youtube.com slash C slash Rush Zone. I have, like, a special, t like, you know, URL, because I got 2,000 subscribers, so you, when you get, like, 1,000, you get a special URL, basically. Okay. So, I will have the URL in the description once I figure that out, so this video may go up a little bit later than usual, because I have to figure that out. Yeah, but if you're a kid who's under 16, I would not recommend watching without parental consent. Particularly, just, just this one episode. Or whatever. This is just this one stream slash two videos. They're coming up. So, yeah. We're in Rocket League, so how have you been, Rush? been good you know just um was on spring break in new york and that was fun kind of i mean new york is new york yeah not the safest place on earth no it's not definitely definitely not the safest place in the united states um but i didn't have, have any spider-man or an iron man to protect us there yeah, but um, luckily I uh, luckily I didn't get mugged or anything, you know, or killed. Uh, even though I wasn't staying in the nicest uh, nicest of neighborhoods, but lucky. but yeah, it was um, didn't ride the subway. I made a basically it was like yeah, I'm not going to ride the subway because. I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of people have been pushed into the subway recently onto oncoming trains, and a couple people have died. So I was like, yeah, that's not acceptable. Um, but, anyways, so yeah, it was fun though. I went to a bunch of different places. I went to uh, the Met Museum of Art, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I saw a bunch of stuff there. I saw the uh, famous painting of. George Washington crossing the Delaware, and I also saw the Egyptian exhibit, and you know, that was pretty cool. Stayed in Manhattan, so went to Central Park. You know, typical New York visit. Um, and yeah, how was your, well, you don't really have a, technically a spring break, but you did go on a trip, right? How was your trip? Yeah, so I went on, I don't have spring break, but my little brother does. And I have to wait every year until he gets on spring break to go on a trip. And then brother, me, and grandma, and mother go on a trip. We do some things I want to do, some things brother wants to do, and some things mother wants to do, and some things grandma. This was a specialty trip this year. Uh, for those who have been on the channel while, you've heard this, so this is a repeat. But this is new for Rush. Um, for those been... You know I went to see family I haven't seen in 14 plus years. Wow. Talked to some of them. Some of them I don't even talk to and I can't remember. Because I didn't have their cell phone number. And they're really bad family members, some of them. What do you mean bad? Um, way too much language, way too much smoking, way too much stuff. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> But family is family, but you don't have to do everything. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, 
There's definitely family members in my family who I don't see very often. Um, also, last one of the family members I, I saw, last time I saw her, which last, last time, so 15 years ago, she was smoking and she has officially quit smoking and has got that out of her life, which I'm proud of her for. That's good. She does not want her name mentioned on YouTube or Twitch, so that's why we're calling her her. That yep. would be a lot different. Yeah, I don't want my name mentioned either, but I don't think you even know my name. Or no, if I you do. No, I yeah, don't, just I don't. call me Rush Zone. I call you Rush. Is that fair? Yeah, Rush. That's fine. But yeah, I definitely... Um, I've been doing YouTube. I guess we can talk a little bit about Sorry. my history. So I barely streamed in my... I, st I made an account like in 2016, and I probably streamed like 10 hours since then, you know? Um, in like six years, uh, something like that. I've streamed like ten hours because, like, basically every time I would stream, ex for the exception of like a couple times, I'd always just have one viewer, and I just would quit, you know. But I, I found a little more success on YouTube. Um, I've made like probably twenty different YouTube channels over like since 2012, 2013. Most of them never really did well, but. In 2016, I made, I was a freshman in high school and I made a channel originally called Darkrai, uh, which is a Pokemon, if you, for those of you who don't know, I was really into Pokemon, and eventually became my Rush Zone channel. Basically, I made a video about uh, Pokemon, like, hacks on an emulator, I don't know if you guys know what an emulator is, but I'm not going to explain it. It's a way to basically play old games on a computer. There's different emulators for different consoles, and I was playing Pokemon Red, and I did a way to get unlimited Master Balls. Made the video, and I got a thousand views, and I got like 50 subscribers, which is the first time in history of my since 2012, you know, that I ever got over, you know, any interaction at all. Most of my videos would get like 10 or 15 views, and no likes, no uh, comments, no interaction. And I didn't really realize until like a month later when I came back, I'm like, whoa, I have 50 subscribers, what the heck, you know? And so eventually I, you know, I, I, I shifted it from Pokemon focused. I made like a one other Pokemon video that was like an intro to a series I never finished, which got like 50 views and six likes. Probably gained like one or two subscribers from that. And then for like the next three years, I did YouTube on and out, on and off. I really tried in 2017, and I barely gained any subscribers. I mean, I, I did get interactions though, for the first time. Like people would comment like, hey, great video, I subbed. Or, you know, wow, why don't you have more subscribers? Your content's awesome. But the problem was, despite people taking their time to comment on a video, they didn't subscribe usually. And a lot of people who did comment wanted to do something called sub for sub, which basically doesn't really work because you can get a lot of subscribers, but they don't watch your videos because they're not they're not subscribing to you to watch your videos. They're subscribing to you, so you subscribe to them as well. So it's a way to get a lot of subscribers, but they don't watch your videos, so it's basically dead viewers. But basically, I quit YouTube a bunch of times, but I... Eventually uploaded around 200 videos. I started off with gaming. I eventually shifted over to memes, and I started finding some success with memes. Um, and basically, I won't go on too much longer. But I got a viral video, two viral videos, which got over two million views. Both of them, I believe, one of them got 1.6 million views, and one of them got um, like one, like 500,000 views. Um, and it was like my lucky break. I never ever got over a thousand views before that video the most views i got before those videos was like a 200 300 views on a meme um and basically the videos were spongebob memes one of them was directly just taken from the show the one that got 1.9 or 1.6 million was basically called uh united states healthcare portrayed by spongebob and it was basically just mocking the US healthcare system. It was basically, there was no edits, nothing, just a clip from the show that was basically parodying healthcare. And it blew up. Uh, I don't know how it blew up, but the algorithm just pushed it out. And so I basically gained from like 
50 subscribers. I went to 2,000, like 100 subscribers with those two videos. And now I'm stuck at 2,000. I'm losing subscribers every day <laughs> because I don't upload and I don't, I can't replicate that success because it got copy striked. And basically, I didn't make any money from it because obviously it's copyrighted content. So I could have made like probably $100 from it. That's the saddest thing. Like 2 million views or maybe $200. Because memes don't have a high monetary value. Um, I think the content that has the most money on YouTube is like vlogging and beauty and technology products. Or like or like things that advertise like luxury goods. Like for example, vlogging, you advertise your Louis Vuitton and your million dollar home. So real estate and luxury goods sell a lot of advertisements. Whereas memes, you know, you can't really put a targeted ad on that. It's getting kind of complex, I guess, for a family-friendly channel. But I just wanted to go over, like, my history as, like, a content creator. I I've basically given up. I uploaded, like, my last upload on YouTube was, like, six months ago. Um, I, I basically am focusing on school right now. Um, but yeah. How about you, John? What's your history as a content creator? So I started... On Twitch, I realized I knew ahead of time that um, it was going to be hard because I took the view that I'm not going to get anybody or anyone for four years minimum. And then um, I really was nervous at the beginning, like really didn't know what in the world I was doing, didn't know how to do it, just basically the idiot on Twitch. And I was getting no views, which I'm like, yeah, I expect that. And that continued on for about three months. And then when I started a YouTube channel after that, just because I was gonna, I got a new PC and I could actually record and not just stream it and the streams get deleted because my old PC was a really old PC in terms of frustrating. It was like from 2016, but it was like the absolute bottom tier gaming PC back then. Like it had a mm. GTX 1650 in it. Mm. it yeah, that is pretty bad. Out. I have a 1070 Ti, I'll say that. And honestly, no, I've been playing Elden... It wasn't a 1650, it was a 1050. Oh, a 1050. Yeah, I have a 1070 Ti, which is pretty old at this point, because the 3070 is out. Um, but I can play, like, Elden Ring, you but know, which is a really... laptop edition. It's a desktop. I got a pre-built. Uh, but I, I can play... I got a Elden... laptop. So I was trying oh. to stream with a 1050, not TI, just 1050, on a laptop edition 1050. Yeah. I mean, I used to have an Alienware. I had it since 2013. It's the computer I had for, like, literally my whole life. Well, not my whole life, but, like, my whole gaming life. I started gaming on PC when I played Minecraft and for the first year, I think it was 2012, I had basically like a Dell Inspiron and uh, it was it was awful. I mean that thing could barely could barely uh, run Minecraft at like 10 FPS. My um, first PC I ever was on was a Windows 95 PC. Wow. Yeah, but um Basically, my mom caved in and bought me like a gaming computer, but it wasn't really that good. I don't even know what the graphics card was, but yeah, it that's wasn't. That's for you. That see, they think they know everything and they don't. Well, no, I I, I chose the PC. <laughs> I chose the PC. I just didn't know anything about computers because I was in like middle school, and I just thought, oh, Alienware, that's a cool brand. I've heard about that before, uh, and I couldn't afford a Razer. You know, I wanted a Razer gaming computer, but I I couldn't afford that. Um, yeah, so because the razors are like two thousand dollars minimum, because they're actually good specs, but they're overpriced. But anyways, um, that thing could run Minecraft like at three hundred FPS, but that was back when Minecraft was like in one point, like one point two, one point three. Like it's much different now. There's a lot more added to the game. Like running, you can still download Minecraft one point two and. Some people run it at like 100,000 FPS on like a really good computer. I mean, it's it's so easy to run. But I could also run, you know, Counter-Strike, which again is like a, from 2012. So basically any game from like 2013 to 2014, I could run really easily. 
But like when I started playing PUBG in 2017, before I, I got my gaming computer, my new one, the current one, in 2019, um, I got it on sale for Christmas, and I paid for half of it, and my mom paid for half of it. Uh, you're, you're saying what? What? Am I cutting out? No, I was. I was trying to say something, and I realized no, that's not. I don't want to brag. Oh yeah, but basically, um. I got. I had this computer that could not run like PUBG, could not run, um, you know, the new Call of Duty games. It, it, yeah. it couldn't run really anything. Um, besides, like you know, the games from basically games from like 20, 2011, 20, 2013. Like you know, games like um, Counter Strike, games like. I think we get the um, idea. Yeah. So, but now I can run, like, even with a 1070, I can run Elden Ring at, like, high settings, you know. Yeah. It looks good. So, I, I, I'm definitely trying to get an upgrade to a 2070, but, you know, with, um, with the current prices of GPUs, I don't think I'll be getting a new GPU anytime soon until Congress actually does something, you know. Because it's up to Congress, ultimately, to... Um, fix this problem with the chip shortage and the COVID recession. And they fixed the COVID recession for some things, but other things they've completely ignored. But anyways, um, yeah, so... What about you? What, what are the specs of your computer? That's why I didn't want to brag. Yeah, well, you got that stimulus money. I didn't get that because <laughs> I was a dependent. Okay, um, fair enough. My computer is a 3900X, which was $550 at the time. Wow. So starting off strong. It's got a $150 on sale liquid cooler after Christmas. Um, a, about a year, about a year and, and a half. And you built it Christmas. yourself? Yes. It's nice. About half, about a few months after Christmas, once I saved up, you know, again, got the $150 cooler. Um, it's got 32 gigabytes of G Skill Trident Z Neo RAM at CL18. Is that 32 or, or 16? 32. Nice, I only have 16. It's got a gigabyte Aurorus X570 Master Motherboard. Nice. That's uh, normally $300 motherboard guy on sale for 200 something. Nice. On um, Black Friday, thanks. And we're, sorry to interrupt, but where did you learn to build a computer? Where did you learn that? YouTube. On YouTube? YouTube? Nice. Yeah, I was worried about it because when I was building, when I was thinking I about building. I helped too, but I grew up in a techie family, so that might have helped. When I, uh, I was always getting different information about like the, the, the size of things and I was worried I was going to buy all these parts and then they weren't going to fit you know like yeah, the graphics so card where be... your thing comes in handy that, the form factor comes in handy at that time yeah like I, I was going for a mid tower build but like it would say like oh someone would say like oh yeah this graphics card should fit no problem and then someone else was like oh yeah but with that cooler uh, that you know that and I didn't know how to install a water cooler I was worried about that so I got a I was planning on doing a basically just a regular standard cooler and basically people would be like on Reddit would be like yeah that that's not gonna fit other people would be like yeah that will fit and eventually I was like you know what I'm just gonna I'm just going to buy a pre-built and get it on sale because so, pre-builds I got I, it on a good deal I priced it out I knew all the parts and basically I saved a hundred dollars on a pre-built like it was like if I built it it would have been a hundred dollar more actually at the time because it was a Christmas sale yeah mine was Black Friday so that might have made a difference yeah so basically like now pre-builds are like so overpriced like yeah. it's insane like they're not like I saw a pre-built with like a i7 and a 3060 for like two thousand dollars, and I was like, "There's no way that that should be like fifteen hundred. And I saw one with like an i9 and like a 3070 for four thousand six hundred dollars, and I'm like, "My God, that is like two thousand dollars overpriced, or a thousand five hundred dollars more than the retail price if you built it." I get the graphics cards are expensive, but like. That is so overpriced. I see why people say don't buy a pre-built. But I just made sure... I, I studied the parts and made sure I wasn't overpaying. That's a good idea. Um, 
now yeah, it's impossible I didn't, to do that. It's just impossible now. Yeah, you have to build it or just be willing. What I find really funny is when people buy Max at, like for like four thousand dollars and they expect them to be good at gaming. It's like, oh, well, I paid four thousand dollars, so it must be a good gaming computer. You know, like some what Macs. What they don't really... realize is most games don't work with Mac OS. Yeah, most games don't run on Linux or Mac. Um, let alone, like the graphics card is like a thousand, two thousand, sometimes three thousand dollars overpriced for like. It's like a server graphics card, you know. Yeah, and um, you, graphics it, card have come down quite a bit. I've, I've, I don't know, man. They're still pretty expensive. Like the old ones have come down, but like the new ones have come down a bit. I said not a lot. I said a bit. Yeah, I don't know. I just I can't afford even a even like a yeah. I don't, I don't have any. I don't have a job right now, so I can't even afford a um. What I'm saying is, in Germany, an, you. Uh, an RX, an RX, six, the bottom RX 6000 series was sold for, was selling in Germany. I know it's not U.S., but still, take, take the. It was a study done in Germany, so sorry, there's no, I didn't find a U.S. study lately. You know, the point is, in Germany, for under retail price. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's just crypto miners coupled with the um, Short COVID recession. Day. Coupled with the chip shortage, you know, Sales and scalping. Shortage. Yeah, it's insane right now. Yep. Can I get back to finish my PC specs? Yeah, sure. I have RX 5700 XT, not overclocked. But it's a Gigabyte Gaming OC RX 5700 XT. So it's pre overclocked. Nice. I just realized that now. Um, if you, I don't know if your audience would really know what those specs are, though, to be honest. They wouldn't, probably not, but, you know, you ask, I'm answering your questions, uh, which is okay. nice. Okay. Yep, I've thank got you. a I appreciate Samsung it. 970 Evo plus 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. I've got a Western Digital Red NAS 4 terabyte hard drive with 6 gigabyte per second transfer speed on the cable and also a cache buffer in the hard drive and 5400 RPM because I didn't know the difference between 5400 and 7400 RPM at the time. Um, nice. Uh, let's see, I got a Corsair HX 1000 watt power supply. 1000 watts, dang. But I'm going to have to buy a new one if I get a new graphics card due to the it not having the PCI Express 5.0 connector because that was not a thing at the time. So may I ask what channels you watch to learn to build? Was it Linus? More than just Linus. It was Linus, basically all the tech, big tech channels. Linus, yeah. Hardware and Box, Gamers Nexus, Jay's Two Cents. Yeah, I used to watch him. He was funny. Um, you know, those channels. Yeah, got you. Um, occasionally Gumbo, Tech Gumbo. Tour. Never heard of him. Honestly, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I occasionally watch him because um, I wanted to learn how to do some Windows stuff, optimize Windows, so that he was on Tech Gumbo. That wasn't tech, that's more software. Anyway, point is, that's software. And yeah. my mother's software, I'm not. And my mother's too busy developing code for the state to, um... Oh, your mother is a programmer? Yeah. Nice. She's a code developer and programmer. And nice. Help desk. She's got a busy That's... job. Yeah, I can say that again. Programmers, especially for games, are famous for working overtime like sometimes 80 hours a week or something like that oh if you work for a major five in the morning to five in the afternoon and if there's a mm. special project i remember this one time that she worked for three months from five in the morning to 1 a.m because she Dang. had a project that that's that awful time. that's the downside with like big professions like any like almost every profession that's like masters or a doctorate you'll be working like a lot of hours like for example a brain surgeon you may make like you know six hundred thousand dollars but you're not going to get to enjoy that money until you retire 
maybe you can retire at age 40, but from 21 or, you know, 24 to 43, you're working round the clock, basically, you know, 50, 60 hours a week doing, like, incredibly tedious, incredibly dangerous, risky, perform you know, heart surgery or brain surgery, you know, that, that, that's dangerous. If you get, if you fail it, if you kill somebody, you get sued and you lose your job. You can't make a single mistake for 30 years, 40 years. That's why not a lot of people can be brain surgeons or even oncologists or, you know, yeah. gynecologists. There's, that's a, the whole insurance business and medical malpractice. And take a lawyer. Lawyers work a lot of hours and just every high paying job, almost every high paying job, except like a stock trader, you know, or like an actor. And even actors sometimes work long hours. So, yeah, I mean, like there are some benefits to working like a trade or something. You have a certain amount of hours and. You know, it's something to take into consideration when you, if you plan on going to college. Definitely consider, you know, the amount of hours you'll be working, especially as like a doctor or a lawyer, you know, or other popular majors like a biochemist, a programmer. Yeah. My dad's got a master's in programming and wow. doesn't make that much money compared to some programmers. Yeah, it's just depends on what field you're in. I know cybersecurity is huge, but it's not the highest paying. It can be if you work for the NSA and you're like the lead. Yeah. That's also like a really high stakes job. If you mess that up, you're fired instantly. Yeah. There's no room for mistake in cybersecurity because one breach can mean d disaster, especially for a, co a country. If you're managing a country's cybersecurity, you have to be the best of the best, basically. Yep. I originally wanted to go into programming, but I just, it was too stressful. I just couldn't handle it, basically. Um, I won't go into much more detail because it's kind of private, but. Yep, yep, that's, we're going to end it, we're going to stop that conversation there. But yeah, I definitely had dreams of YouTube for a while, but I've basically given up. <laughs> So, um, I wasn't done missing my PC specs. Oh, okay. Still going. Yep. I have a Cooler Master TD500 mesh case, and I have six Cooler Master Master Fan ML120 Halo White Edition, and a Cooler Master Master Fan PWM Hub, and a generic just RGB Hub. <clears throat> and nice. I can list my monitor specs, my monitor, but. I think we get the point. <laughs> yeah. I spent a lot of money on it, and it was all due to COVID money and me saving up for a couple years before that. Nice. And so what happened was how I paid for it is I paid for everything except $500 of it. I think in my family played the rest of $500 out of the $3,000 I spent on the computer. And this was before the, um, like the, was this before? Well, no, it was during COVID, so never mind. I uh, was during after the... the first or second stimulus check, but I spent most of my first one in putting that in a way in long-term savings. About How much did you spend on the graph? What graphics card did you say you have again? RX 5700 XT before the big... RX 5700. What's that? I'm not familiar with AMD. What's that in, in, in comparison to an, uh, NVIDIA? 2070. 2070. Nice. Okay. So it's equivalent to a 2070. And you said you had an AMD uh, CPU too? Yeah. What's it an equivalent to Intel? Because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, Intel Thinks Gen 4 i9. Oh, wow. Nice. i9. Dang. And not their not their first i9, not the, eighth, not the ninth gen i9, the 10th gen. Nice. Yeah, that's good. I mean... I guess I can list my specs. I only said the graphics card. I mean, I have... Are you done listing your specs, or...? Uh, no. Um... I think I got everything. Yeah, I think you got... I mean, you listed a lot. I mean, some of the stuff I didn't even know. <laughs> um... But yeah, I mean, I have basically an Intel i7-8700. Not overclocked, not a 8700K. And I have 16 gigs of RAM, which I think is, like... I think it's like uh, Trident 
G skill, like RGB RAM. I'm not sure what the megahertz speed is, but again, this is probably probably 2666 since that doesn't support 3600. It only goes up to 2666. That frequency. yeah, I don't think it's the 3600 one because no, it, it was again it, it was it, it doesn't support it. You have to wait until Intel, Intel tenth gen to get 2666. Yeah, so I and then I have a 1070 Ti. You have to wait till Intel tenth gen to get 3600. Yours, the highest yeah. that will go is 2666 instead of 2100. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I have Trident G-Skill, 16 gigs of RAM. I have a, uh, let's see, I have a, I started with the base, uh, 250 gigabyte SSD, not like, uh, it's solid state drive. And then I had a terabyte of, um, of storage. Yeah. And then I added two external hard drives, which I bought because I didn't know how to install hard drives at first, um, which were both a terabyte. And then I installed myself with, with the help. Of, like, I went to Best Buy and they did it with me because I was afraid I was going to short circuit the computer. Um, I installed a terabyte or two terabyte SSD. Uh, I think it was easy, right? Seagate. Um, and then I also did install, like, a. I didn't come with a wireless card, so I actually installed a wireless card by myself, um, which was scary, but I did it and didn't short circuit the computer, and it was just installing it, replacing where the other one was, so I knew where That's to put it and everything. That's not scary compared to actually wiring the computer. Yeah, I, I never did that, like I said. I, I watched a bunch of videos. That is scary nerve-wracking, even to this day for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I know wiring is, people always joke about wiring and how people, messy people's wiring is, um, I, I bet mine would be horrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't, like I said, I bought a pre-built, but I just made sure it was fair, uh, you know, pr price-wise. Um, and yeah, so I think those are the main specs, so I have like six or eight terabytes of storage now with all the hard drives, um, you know, I have the 1070 Ti. Like I said, I, I can play most games, you know, most, like I played Red Dead Redemption 2 on high, and that's a pretty demanding game. It's from 28, 2018, but I mean, it is pretty demanding. Yeah. Um, At least her graphics card is better than grandma's in her new PC, quote unquote. What is her graphics card? GT42. A what? GT420. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> What's it, what year is it from? Uh, 2010, 2011. Oh wow. Yeah, and that's... I can tell I can tell you Grandma's PC specs because I designed it and couldn't get her a new graphics card time because that was when it was like 300 percent over. Yeah, to be honest, I think we've went over enough of the uh, specs for today. <laughs> I don't think the viewers really want to hear more about that. Probably not. No. I think anyway, they probably. I'll do that another time with Grandma. Yeah. Anyway, the. So where were we? Because I'm. Uh, well, we were talking about specs, but we were talking kind of about YouTube and our histories. All right, back to the YouTube history before we got. Yeah, what's started. your history? So as I was saying, um, started out on Twitch and started. I stopped. We got dis distracted as uh, uh, me starting YouTube. Messed up. Which you'll find out on the next edition of this episode because we're already at 30 minutes and I need to record a second one. Oh, so you only do 30 minute episodes? Yeah, and then. And, but the stream is an hour. Nice. So for those watching on Twitch, please like and. Uh, messed up. For those watching on Twitch, I'll continue. However, for those watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Please follow me on Twitch. It'd be very much appreciated. You do not have to. Hope you have a great day, everybody. Bye bye.